friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, and I am back again with another video. Today I'm going to be setting up my husband's bullet journal for November 2019 with an Avro Aero theme. So this is a very niche theme that Jason has been wanting for a few months now. So rather than me trying to explain what this is, I'm just going to pass the voiceover over to him and he's going to tell you a little bit about what the Avro Arrow is and why he wanted this theme. For this month, I asked my super awesome wife to make me an Avro Arrow themed bullet journal. The Avro Arrow, also known as the CF-105, was a Canadian interceptor jet that never went into service. It was designed and prototyped and built through the mid-50s. The reason I chose the Arrow is not because of, you know, my love for warplanes or anything like that. It's more this uh, romantic Canadian history and conspiracy theories uh, evolved in and around the Arrow. Some say it was a plane ahead of its time. It may not have been, but it was definitely high spec. Uh, but it was a huge project that 30,000 Canadians got together and put together. And there were some successful flight tests. The project was cancelled in February of 1959 by the Canadian government. Uh, there's a lot of you know, different ideas as to why, mostly probably due to overspending and lack of need for a large interceptor in Canada. But where the conspiracy comes in is when all of the planes were ordered, destroyed, dismantled, cut up, and sent for recycle. All the plans, all the data, everything that they'd acquired on the plane was also trashed, destroyed. And the juicy part is some people have implied that one plane got away, one prototype that was in a hangar, flew off maybe to England somewhere, and it's hiding. To further this conspiracy, in the depths of the internet years ago, I found one of the ejector seats for the plane that was serial numbered to have been in that plane for sale in England. No real evidence has really come out other than also one of the Iroquois engines that were supposed to have been put in the planes in early 1960 is also in England. If you want to see some terrible Canadian 90s made-for-TV historical drama, there's a film called The Arrow, and it stars Canada's own Dan Aykroyd. It's horribly overacted, very over-dramatized, very little fact, but it's some really great cheesy 90s Canadian film. Well, I don't know if I would call it a film. Um, it's definitely a made-for-TV movie, but if you are interested in watching it, if you want to learn more about the Avro Arrow in a fictionalized way, I believe the entire thing is on YouTube, so if it is, I will link it down below in the description box so that you can check it out. So now that you know a little bit about the Avro Arrow and why Jason wanted this theme, let me chat through what I'm actually doing for the setup. So for the cover page, we had seen a poster for the Avro Arrow that had sort of a sliver of sky with the arrow flying out of it. And we both thought that was really cool. And I was trying to think about how I could incorporate this, how I could make this work in his bullet journal and decided painting it would probably be my best bet. So using my watercolor set, as always, all of the supplies I'm using will be linked in the description box down below. I decided to paint this perfect sort of sliver of sky using washi tape as a guide so I could get a nice clean line. And once it was completely dry, I kind of sketched in the shape and size of the arrow where I wanted it to be so that I could start to paint the arrow using my white gouache. Gouache is very similar to watercolor. It is a water-based paint, but it is more opaque. It has more pigment. So especially when you're working with white, in my experience, I find it's much easier to use a gouache rather than a watercolor. So I'm using my washi tape again to kind of tape out the general shape of the plane and then using my white gouache to paint over the sky so that I can get a nice bright white for the body of the plane. I also used my white gouache to add clouds to the sliver of sky. My biggest tip for working with watercolor and gouache, especially in a bullet journal, is to use the least amount of water you can so you'll have less of a chance of warping the page. As you'll see, I did get a tiny bit of warping in Jason's Steambag notebook but nothing excessive because I really kept the water to a minimum. You also want to make sure you give it plenty of time to dry between layers of paint because if it is damp at all you might get some bleeding and not quite get the effect that you're going for. 
I'm also adding the few details that you can see on the plane. So it has some accents of red, it has some black areas like the nose, and it also has a few little details like little maple leaves to indicate that it is a Canadian plane on the wings. It also has one on the side along with RL and its serial number. I also drew in the little windows in the cockpit. Ended up realizing that the tail wasn't quite large enough, so I added some more tail and painted a little bit more in the white to then cover it up with the red. My initial plan was to use my red Tombow brush pen over the gouache to get the red areas, but I found when it dried, it really pulled more pink than a true red. So I ended up using a sort of rusty, orangey sort of shade for my paint palette on top of that to cancel out the pinker tones and get more of a true red on those accented areas. So moving on to the calendar page, for the calendar, I'm keeping it relatively simple, but I thought it would be cool to do technical diagrams of the Avro Aero. So one diagram looking at the nose of the plane and one diagram from above looking at the entire plane, basically just doing line art with a fine liner and adding the tiniest bit of a color accent to the above view for the little Canadian flags on the wings. And I printed actual diagrams to use as reference because I wanted to do the best job I could to accurately draw the arrow. Obviously there are some areas that I'm sure aren't perfect, but you know, I did my best to represent it in as accurate a way as possible. And I thought that the front view of the plane fit really well on the left side of the page above the monthly calendar. And then I used the open area on the right page of the spread to draw the larger top view of the plane. Every time Jason asks me to do a theme for something a little more technical, the last one that I remember spending about as much time on was the Apollo theme that I did a while back. And just trying to draw accurate logos, trying to draw accurate diagrams of machines takes quite a bit of time and effort and attention to detail if you want it to look remotely accurate. It's definitely a bit of a time commitment, but I really like how these turned out. I just think they look super cool. So I feel like it was worth the effort that went into drawing these with as much detail as possible. Also alternating between red and blue over the days of the week on the monthly, just to tie in that one color accent from the wings. As you can see, I have a tiny bit of bleed through from the Tombows that I used to draw the maple leaves on the wings. I just went over the same spot a little bit too much. So just be aware of that in your own bullet journal. Be careful going over the same spot too many times. I find Tombows specifically tend to bleed through pretty easily on this paper in the Dingbats notebooks. Not so in other notebooks necessarily. Um, it just really depends on the specific paper you're using. So it's always good to test things out. Sometimes I forget what works well and what doesn't on the Dingbats paper because I'm currently using a Scribbles That Matter notebook and I'm alternating between the two. Obviously I'm usually using my own notebook and only setting up Jason's bullet journal once a month so sometimes I forget the differences in the paper which I guess is probably a bit of a unique problem to me. So setting up the invoice page and the first page of the notes, the invoice is exactly the same as last month, so I won't go into explaining it. If you want more details on the invoicing spread, check out last month's setup in my husband's bullet journal because I explained it there. I'll link it in the cards. And then for the first page of his notes section, I'm just recreating the Avro aircraft logo. And here is the final flip through of the setup. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I like the tiny bit of color accent, just a little bit of blue and red here and there, but primarily black and white. Quite simple, yet effective. I want to take a second to shout out my newest patrons, Jeanette, Silge, Sabine, Leslie, Caitlin, Kat, Rachel, Angela, Susiani, Brittany, Allison, Melissa, Shelley, and Kimberly. 
welcome all of you to the squad. I'm so excited to have you. I'm excited to hang out with you on our monthly live stream tomorrow and to get to know you in the Discord server. And I hope you enjoy all of your bonus content and printables. If you want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the description box and in the card. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your lovely, lovely feedback on my November setup, on my setups from October. I'm really feeling the love from y'all recently and it's so, so nice. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye friends.